Judy Morgan. All right, good morning, everyone. I think we're live on both Instagram and Facebook. Good morning, Instagram. Good morning, Facebook. We're a little slow this morning because I forgot that I was supposed to be the one to do live this morning because the doctor is with Nanny at the doctor's office, I think. Um, she had a doctor's appointment this morning. And Nanny doesn't drive anymore, so um, she had to take her to her appointment. Um, so this has been quite an interesting week for those of us in the natural pet care industry. Uh, there's been quite a bit of drama that has popped up this week, and we try to stay very far away from any drama um, just because we are so focused on our mission and um, it's it can drain a lot of your energy, time, and resources to get involved in, in drama that you could otherwise spend um, working on your mission. So for, for us, we've kind of been mostly bystanders, but there was some drama in the, the pet food industry with um, a few pet food companies that are involved in, in legal matters. And then um, there was another holistic veterinarian that we work with that we respect very much that um, an article came out that to me just was very biased and um, just nasty. I really did not like it at all. So this really started to get me thinking, how do we figure out who we trust in the pet care industry, whether that's your veterinarian, uh, the pet food company that you get your food from, uh, if you're getting treats, toys, advice, do you go to a nutritionist, um, all these different things. How do you decide who you can trust with your pet's health and care? And to me, this is a really challenging question because there are people that have all the credentials in the world that I do not agree with at all. And then there's people that don't have any credentials that have to do with pets or pet care. And to me, they're really smart, insightful people that I feel like um, are really in tune and in touch with what our pets need. So it's difficult because we really like to be able to say, oh, this is a veterinarian. I can trust them wholeheartedly with my pet's care and with their advice. But I've had many experiences, and I'm sure many of you have, where you go to a veterinarian and something bad happens or something that you don't agree with or they give you advice that you really wholeheartedly do not think is correct for your pet. So for, for us, we are super lucky, especially me. I mean, both of my parents are veterinarians. I work all day, every day in the pet care industry. I've loved animals my entire life. And I, I get to know a lot of the people behind the scenes. So a lot of these business owners, a lot of these veterinarians, a lot of these advocates in the industry, we get to know them personally, which to me is like the, the best. That's like the top tier for me personally. If I can interact with someone genuinely, I feel like I can get a really good feeling for who they are as a person and what they stand for and a lot of their knowledge. Um, great example, my personal veterinarian, it's not my mom, um, she is an integrated veterinarian. And the reason I had such a hard time finding a veterinarian that I trusted because um, there were just some really big red flags where people, you know, I would bring in a sick animal and they'd be like asking me if I wanted to take home Brevecto. And I'm like, 
no, no, I really don't. <laughs> um, you know, and stuff like that was big red flags for me. But the reason why I love my current integrative veterinarian is because even though um, our views don't align 100%, there's some things that she has recommended that I just didn't I didn't want to do or I didn't feel comfortable with. Um, but we can have a conversation and she really genuinely listens to me. She cares if I have something different than what she is recommending that I would like to try. She's very open minded um, and she gives me her professional opinion because at the end of the day, she is a veterinarian. I'm not. Um, and so we can have that conversation where if I say, hey, I don't really feel comfortable with that. She can either, um, you know, she will come back and say, oh, this is the reason behind me suggesting this. Or she'll say, OK, if you don't feel comfortable with that, we could try something else. Or what would you like to try, for example? So that's personally something that's really important to me is being able to have a conversation with someone, being able to have an honest conversation with someone, especially with like pet food. Um, honesty for me is really, really big with pet food because um, the regulations the regulatory bodies when it comes to pet food are not not the greatest, in my opinion. So it really comes down to a lot of trust. Do you trust who you're getting your pet food from? Do you trust your veterinarian? Do you trust the website that you're um, educating yourself on? Do you do you trust the the course that the author of the course that you're taking? So uh, another good example um, is our, our CBD company, Naturally Healthy Hemp. And so the CBD market is, I, I always refer to it as a minefield because there's a lot of shady stuff that happens in the CBD industry. A lot of false advertising um, and people just doing things in a, in a not great way. Um, so an example for that for CBD was there's um, this company that we were talking to and they were labeling their bottles with, I forget how they phrased it, but it was like 500 milligrams of hemp oil or hemp extract, something along those lines. But it looked just like all the other companies that we carry that say like 500 milligrams of CBD or 500 milligrams of full spectrum hemp oil, for example. Um, but when we would look at the certificate of analysis for this uh, one example, the amount of CBD, the 500 milligrams was actually the total amount of whatever they were using, the extract or the hemp oil. Um, however, that was not actually the amount of CBD in the bottle. And to figure out how much CBD was in the bottle, you had to look at the certificate of analysis, know the specific gravity of CBD, do some calculations, and then you could get your milligram amount of CBD in the bottle, which was significantly lower than 500. It's like 100 or something like that. Um, so that was a, a scenario where for, for me, I mean, we're, we're business owners and we're behind the scenes, but for me, I was like, I don't know if that was on purpose or not to be misleading, but I feel misled um, is the conclusion of that story. And so I didn't really feel comfortable with promoting that product just because I felt like it was confusing and misleading to people. And I didn't want that to come off as like people thinking that we were trying to rip them off when they were getting a um, a product that was more expensive and had less CBD in it, but it was labeled um, a little bit misleading. So I think that a lot of these things come down to you as the pet parent really have to kind of think what are some things that I look for in a company or a veterinarian or a healthcare professional? What are the things that I'm looking for to decipher whether or not they're trustworthy? I mean, for pet food, a great example, Viva Raw, the, the two owners of Viva Raw were just actually in our office yesterday. We completely forgot to take a picture, but we love those guys. They're just the nicest, sweetest people. They're also, we found out both of them um, when were in the Ivy League for college, just really smart, really caring, passionate people. And, you know, just meeting them, being around them, you can tell that they just really care. They love pets. They love animals. And um, they are trying to produce the best quality food possible. So for me, I love getting to meet these people because I feel full confidence. I mean, we felt confident before that we were recommending them anyway, but just spending more time around them just keeps reaffirming my confidence that they are doing things the right way because they are just genuinely good people. Um, same thing with my veterinarian, same thing with many of the companies that we partner with. Um, 
like if you'll see a lot on social media, we're always all kind of cross posting everyone's different content. And like our summit, we have um, nine different experts that are coming in for completely free. They're really doing us a huge favor. Um, and so people like that, they genuinely care. Um, Dr. Katie, you know, she's uh, earlier on than my mom is in her holistic veterinary journey, but she, I mean, it, she says she works all the time. She works super hard. It's uh, it's a challenging field to get into in, in some respects because the, the industry is often under attack, unfortunately. Um, but you just meet these people. And for me, I get the warm fuzzies, <laughs> you know? And then for products, you can look at the ingredient label, ask about sourcing. Companies should, they can't always give away proprietary information. I completely understand that um, because, you know, then someone could easily rip them off. But, um, you know, if you call up a company and you ask questions and you say, hey, you know, where do you get your meat from? Is it U.S. sourced? Is it sourced from Brazil? Is it sourced from overseas? Where do you get um, these ingredients from? Are they organic? Are any of your ingredients organic and they're just not labeled that way or they're um, just not certified, whatever the case is. And if you can talk to the company and you can get that information about where it comes from, how it's made, how it, how it gets to you and your pet and the people genuinely engage with you and care, to me, I think that that speaks volumes and that means a lot. It's unfortunately very challenging for pet parents and, and me too, I am a pet parent when we go on the internet and there's literally you can find one article that's like this is good and you can find an article that's the exact same topic talking about how bad it is right that happens all the time and pretty much on every topic pet food is a big one because there's the traditional people saying that you know prescription diets are the greatest thing ever and then there's people like us that say absolutely not <laughs> so it's really hard for pet parents and we get that question all the time where people will be like I just read from, you know, this traditional veterinarian that's very well respected on the internet, whatever, uh, that they disagree with pretty much everything that Dr. Judy says. What do, what do I believe? And the answer is really you as the pet parent, you have to do some digging, unfortunately, or fortunately, and you have to figure out, do I trust this company? Do I trust this person? Do I believe what they're saying? Do they have any um, experiences or education or anything like that in this area that I find relevant that makes me feel more comfortable? Um, so that's just how I think of it. I would love to hear some insight on how all of you um, make these decisions because I know that for all of us, this is a struggle and it's definitely not something that's an easy fix. Um, and if my veterinarian ever retires, I will probably be on another three year journey to try to figure out um, who I can trust with my pet's care. <laughs> oh. Do all vets offer titer testing? No, they don't. It's getting definitely more popular to titer test instead of uh, vaccinate, but not all vets are offering it. You can specifically ask because they all have all of the veterinarians that you're probably going to, your primary vets are gonna have some type of account with a popular lab like an IDEX or an Antec and they do offer some options. You can also just ask your veterinarian to draw blood for you and you can send um, a titer to protect the pets yourself. And uh, that's Dr. Rob, just protect the pets. It's just protectthepets.com. So there's a lot of options, thankfully, if your veterinarian um, doesn't do titers or they don't do vitamin D testing or whatever it is, there's a lot of over-the-counter ways that you can um, actually work basically with your veterinarian and um, another veterinarian like Dr. Rob in order to uh, get your titer testing done. Do we trust any canned food any canned dog food. So there's a canned dog food. I don't know if it's available in the US um, because it's out of Europe, but it's called Rockster, R-O-C-K-S-T-E-R. -E we know the uh, owners and founders of that company too. Same, same spiel. Um, they're really great people. They're super passionate. The whole product is named after one of their dogs, Rockster, who um, he, he lives, I don't know if he's still alive, but he was like, last we talked to them, he was like 20 years old or something. He was, he was really old. Um, 
But anyway, they're super passionate people. It's an amazing food. So if you can get Rockster, it's a, a canned dog food, and it's absolutely fantastic. Oh. So Debbie said, your mom made so much sense when we had our consultation after that I was on board. Yeah, I mean, some of it to me just makes sense, especially with like a lot of the pet food stuff. It's like, if you look at the ingredients of some of the, the you know, corporate brands that people say are amazing and formulated by veterinary nutritionists, I'm like, this ingredient list does not look good. Like it's all these chemical sounding names and meals and byproducts and stuff. And I'm like, I wouldn't want to eat this, let alone feed it to my pet. Um, and then you look at something like All Provide and it's all whole food ingredients that you recognize and uh, you could eat it yourself. So I'm like, of course I would rather feed that to my dog. Sometimes it's just, it just seems logical. Um, someone says they also pay attention to how their pets react to the person, like in the case of a veterinarian. That's actually a very good point. Um, our pets sometimes are a better judge of character than we are, except for my dog Mila. She loves everyone. I think like someone could come in like a burglar or something and she'd probably be like, hey, welcome. <laughs> so maybe she's not the greatest judge of character, but most of the time our animals are awesome judges of character. Um, yeah, someone had another good point. I trust someone like you guys that will vet other companies. That's true. So that's something that we um, also try to pride ourselves on is we, for all the products that we sell in our store, we do thoroughly vet out all the companies, all the products. Dr. Judy herself is the one that looks over the ingredients and asks the questions. Um, so we, we only onboard something that we truly believe in and we use with our own animals. So that is, of course, if you trust us, then that's great because then you have a whole store of things to choose from. Um, asking for titers. Yep. Yeah. And so some of you, um, were saying that there's, um, some good questions you can ask on the medical side, like for a veterinarian, if they offer various services that are more holistic, like titer testing, acupuncture, chiropractic. Um, of course that can certainly make things easier if they, um, align with your views. All right. Okay, sounds good. I think we are done for the day, but we are going to sign off. Oh, I got a comment on Instagram. I used to tell clients what would happen if you ate a Snickers bar all day, every day, you would be unhealthy. Figured the same for our pets if we feed them junk. Absolutely. So I I totally agree with you there. It just like some sometimes with like the pet food and someone is, is not believing that you know like whole food ingredients are the way to go i'm just like if you just look like just compare the two ingredients you know it's just so it's so eye-opening to see like yes there really are whole food ingredients on one hand and there really are a bunch of processed chemically sounding things on the other hand you know it, it just to me it just really made sense um the chi institute lists that each vet has graduated Oh, what things each vet has graduated from and has been trained in. Yeah, so the Chi Institute is um, one of the major places that people get trained in some of the more holistic modalities. So the Chi Institute, um, that's, I think that's where she got her uh, certification from too. Okay, what brand of CBD oil is good for cancer patients? So for, C for those of you asking about CBD, um, the other company is called Naturally Healthy Hemp. Um, they're on, we're on Instagram, Facebook, email. If you have any CBD questions, feel free to email Brandon. He's my husband, Brandon at naturallyhealthyhemp.com. Um, basically for those of you that already know, I'm sorry, this is repetitive, but for those of you that don't, um, we are just a distributor of CBD. So basically like our whole, that whole business is just vetting out the actual CBD products, vetting out the company. And my husband is um, very well versed in the CBD industry. And so he looks over the certificate of analysis and all that jazz. Um, and he helps clients one-on-one -on -one with um, CBD choices. And he'll even say if, if someone comes with a, a specific issue where he doesn't think that CBD is um, the right choice, he will say that too. Our whole goal is really on education um, around the CBD industry. Okay, I think that's it. Um, if anyone has any questions, let us know. Otherwise, everyone have a wonderful weekend. 
I am so excited to relax and sleep in before Dr. G makes us all unload 300 bales of hay this weekend. <laughs> So we're going to have a fun manual labor filled weekend with um, <laughs> lots and lots of moving hay. So wish us luck and we will see you all on Monday. Bye.